Hello everyone, I'm Bruce Smith from Geograph. Thank you for taking time today to watch some of our brief demo of Crescent Lake for ArcGIS Pro. So to tell you a little bit about Crescent Lake, we launched Crescent Lake as an Esri ArcGIS desktop application back in 2012. We formed Geograph in 2018 to continue the legacy product of Crescent Lake. Since then, we have over 1,500 users, not only using our Esri desktop application Crescent Lake, but also our Crescent Lake web experience and now our recently launched Crescent Lake for ArcGIS Pro. Let's take a look at some of the popular features that are available for you and your teams utilizing Crescent Lake for ArcGIS Pro. Crescent Lake comes with a feature set of useful tools. The first one, and the one you use the most, is Network Manager. Network Manager is used to access the subspatial information related to points and features in the map. By clicking on Network Manager and accessing a location such as a central office, you're presented with several pieces of information, one of which is the ability to add images, files, documents, testing reports, or any, anything else you want to have attached to this location. You have the ability to model in a hierarchy configuration your ISP equipment, such as patch panels, fiber switches, access aggregation points, so on and so forth. Taking a look at a patch panel, you can also see the front and back port configurations and tell what cables the back ports are connected to and what pieces of equipment or devices the front port of the patch panel is connected to. You also have the ability to, on the equipment itself, to add attachments. This is a handy place to add test files, such as SOR testing files, to a device like a patch panel. The network, tool, the network manager bar is also handy for accessing the subspatial information of cable features. For example, here we have a 24 strand fiber. You can see the information of the strands, the color codes of the strands, any kind of nomenclature or count configuration that you may want to assign to the cable. Again, the, the ability to add attachments, the distance of this span of cable, and any slack storage or storage space that may be a part of this cable as well. From here, you can do things like trace an individual fiber just by simply clicking on the fiber, which pulls up our trace result of this single strand and connected circuit of fiber. We can see the offices that this originates and patches through, the patch panel configuration, the equipment connectivity. We can see the fiber strands that it runs through as it travels through the network, all the way back around to its originating location. This circuit represents a full connected transport node or transport ring throughout the network. Here we can also do a design layout record that generates a straight line diagram with the same information, just in a simpler to read configuration. So you see where the active devices are, patch panel connections, fiber strands, field splices, and information such as the total distance and the equipment that this circuit travels through as it passes through the network. We can also do a trace all. This is where it traces every strand of fiber in the network and gives you, lets you know whether it's a connected circuit by highlighting yellow, which means there's two active devices at a minimum on this connected strand of circuit. It also lets you see that you have layered circuits, such as in a DWDM, a splitter configuration, or other layered type circuit configurations. Here we see on fiber three that we have 126 circuits. This is actually a fiber that's being modeled out to a wireless internet tower or a WISP tower. And you can see all of the available connections to the radio at that tower. Our connector tool allows you to do exactly as it says, to connect your network. You can do this in an equipment to equipment configuration. So for example, maybe at a splitter location, you can connect your patch panel to your splitter, to your splitter ports, as you can see here, equipment to equipment. 
You can also do cable to equipment. So maybe your distribution cable to the back of your distribution panel, as you can see here. We can also do field splices or cable to cable splices, as you can see here. Being able to select which cables you want and have them represented in the map with our color code can show you exactly how cables are connected and then allows you to modify those connections by simply clicking on how you want that cable to be connected. You can also do proposed splicing. Proposed splicing puts in a second state and allows you to assign splicing in a proposed fashion that does not mess with the rest of your connectivity and tracing model. The splice analysis tool gives you insight into your splicing that takes you a little deeper than the connectivity tool. Being able to see a tabular view of your splicing and being able to select the cables that you're viewing. So again, this is the field cable that's coming out of that splice. This is the CO side of the cable that's coming in. The two drops that are originating at this splice location. And you can click on any one of these and see how they're spliced to each other. You can also expand these to minimize your view. So if you only wanted to see the first tube of this cable, you could simply unclick the second tube and only be shown the first tube. You can even get down to where you're only uh, viewing certain cables within the, within the uh, splice. You can also generate a PDF to see how the cables are connected. This gives you strand level information in a much more easier to see aerial view of the cable. The distance trace tool is handy when you're trying to track down the location of an outage. Let's assume that a technician goes to a, to, goes to a terminating location or a service address. He uses his OTDR and determines that there is an event or a break in the fiber and he needs to find out exactly where that break is at. We simply use the distance trace tool, click on the testing or the terminating location, the cable we're testing, and then we select the fiber that we're testing. So here we have a two fiber drop. We're testing fiber one. And let's say that 1,250 feet away, we notice an event reported by the OTDR. We run this and we're presented with a trace result that highlights this segment in red. If we right click and zoom to, we can see the span of cable that this, that this uh, distance has pinpointed and the actual location that is 1,250 feet away. Once we know where this location is at, there could be possible other circuits that are affected at this outage. So what we want to do now is get our network manager, click on the span of cable, and run a cable trace. This will let us know if there's other working circuits that may be affected at the span of cable. Here we see that there are numerous other working circuits. We have the customer name and customer phone number as well that we can start being proactive to notify these customers that there is a potential damage at this location and that our services may be disrupted. From here, we can right click and do a report of a cable summary. The cable summary gives you the same information that is reported in the map. So for example, you can see the circuit, the circuit IDs, where they are on the patch panel, their phone numbers, and any other information that you want to include with the circuit. Next is our search tool. Our search tool allows you to quickly identify where locations are in the map by searching the station IDs. For example, this same customer that called in with the trouble earlier. Had we wanted to find out where that location was at, we could simply input their address, 322 Princess Grace, hit search, and we see that there are two locations here. If we right click and say zoom to, we can pinpoint where this location is and start our analysis. We can also flash this location or go ahead and add it to Network Manager without having to go back and grab the icon.
Next is our COAX design tool. Our COAX design tool is designed to calculate not only flow, but power of your HFC network. Here you see a sample design that was loaded from a draft. These drafts can be loaded from map features or saved draft in the map. For example, if we wanted to look at an update of this coax demo, we can see that the updated design is now present in, in, our, in our tool. Here we can see the return highs, return lows, forward lows, forward high calculations that is set forth in the specification tables. Specification tables can calculate all the things such as frequency, tap levels, your amplifiers, cable, inline EQ, splitters, taps, etc. Once you build the spec tables, your design is as simple as, as putting it together as you see fit. Next is our project planner tool. Our project planner allows you to design and build low level design projects. For example, if we search a project, it's going to take us to a project that has several pieces of information, one of which is a custom print layout. A custom print layout in different scales from one to five to one to 400 or setting custom scales, you can mix, mix and match scales as well as you see fit. Each custom print captures what we call a work operation. And a work operation is where you label and list your inventory or bill of material items. This is where you put things like part numbers, account codes, the quantity, um, and the cost per units, units of measure. We can also update these through a material catalog that you preload and have your cost and items already ready for you to add to your work operations. Once you build your job and you have your prints laid out, this generates a custom view of, 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 a, of the layout. You get a cutter, cover sheet that is fully customizable, a unit summary list to include your, to, your items and your description items and any information that you wish to uh, present with that, a key map, and then your layout of your print. Here's a sample of one that we have done through a demo. You have your item descriptions here, your quantities, and tabulations of those on each sheet. Again, you can make this any way you want to as far as your, your tally grids, your information, logos, key maps, indexes if you want. Anything that you want to print on here uh, can be customized. Next is our work order manager. Our work order manager allows you to select work orders for example, we'll pick this one. And once you create a work order, this allows you to tag that work order to any feature in the map, splicing, cables, ISP equipment, ports, anything that you want associated with this work order gets captured as you're designing and drawing your maps. Once you have all of your features collected within a work order, you can do several things from this window, one of which is report on this window, a report on this work order, so we can report on the entire work order in a grouped configure. And this gives us information like our CPR reports that are tied to this work order. We can then export this, the CSV if we needed to feed it into a accounting system or an inventory system. It then allows us to track and monitor the quantities associated with this work order. Built in with the work order is the ability to track statuses on features. So for example, we have our electronics right here, which are the ONTs at these MDUs that are in a proposed state. And you can see that our fiber cable has been completed, our conduit has been completed, but the electronics here are still in a proposed state. So what we can do is once these get installed, we can either select them one at a time, or maybe we do all of them, and we can go to update status. From here, we're going to check the selected records, and we're going to move them from proposed to complete and say update. And what this does is updates the status field and the attribute of these features. Once the, up, once the attribute is updated, you could then design your maps to show where items are proposed, where they're in design, where they're complete, where maybe they're in construction. But again, you can simply update your features in this map to represent project flow. 
Thank you for taking this time to check out Crescently for ArcGIS Pro. If you'd like more information or would like to schedule a live demo, please join us at www.geograph.tech. There you can fill out a contact us form and one of our representatives will be in contact with you shortly. Thank you and have a great day.